Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. In today's session, we will see a one more concept in computer organization or a computer architecture that is address sequencing. Address sequencing. Usually this is also called as sequencer. So here, as the name itself indicates, the process of getting the address of next instruction is a address sequencing. For example, if consider any C program which implements the addition of two numbers. So first one is a declaration, we know that A comma B comma C and the second one is some input statements or directly you can take the values like A is equal to 10 and B is equal to some 20. Okay. And then uh, apply the logic C is equal to some A plus B. So here, uh, let it be our program is in this way, okay, in this way. Now you can see here we are having four instructions. So this is completely, we will call it as a program, right? This is called as a program and program will be having some set of instructions. These are all the instructions. So this program is having five instructions, five instructions. And the execution should be done only in this particular sequence only, right? So first the declaration should be done, then only the value should be stored or assigned into the variables and then the logic should be executed, then the output statement should be executed. So these instructions should be executed in the same sequence. That means while executing the first instruction, the address of next instruction should be loaded into the address register. So, where the address of all these instructions will be uh, available, that will be address register, right? So, control address register. So, in our previous session, we have seen the complete diagram of a microprogrammer control unit where the first box will be the next generator, next address generator, next address generator and from here, the address will be loaded into control address register that will be the instruction will be loaded into the control memory from there we will be getting the control data register right so this diagram we have seen in our previous session now our session focusing on the first part that is how to generate the next address of instruction i mean the address of next instruction right and this will be generated using the four different approaches four different approaches. So, the address sequencing can be done in four approaches. So, let us uh, draw a flowchart so that you can understand each and every approach. So, the first one is an instruction code. Instruction code. So, already we have seen about this instruction code, right? So, instruction format. So, three parts, mode, opcode and the last one is an address, right? And from this, we'll be having the mapping logic. Mapping logic. So this is the first approach to generate the address of next instruction. So here, mapping logic. Mapping logic means, see, from here, it will be loaded into control, address, sorry. There will be a multiplexer. So where all the input signals will be sent through this multiplexer itself, right? So whatever the inputs will be sent through this multiplexer, all the control signals. From multiplexer, will be the address will be loaded into control address register. Control address register. And from control address register, it will move on with control memory control memory right so here the first approach the first approach is mapping logic mapping logic so what is this mapping logic mapping logic so coming to the instruction code we know that the instruction life cycle, uh, or sorry, like the instruction format will be in this way. So this is a mode and this is a opcode 
and this is an address, right? So forget about this address. So it will be represented usually in 12 bits. So what about the remaining? It will be in 4 bits. So it depends upon the mode, we can uh, assume that we can decide that whether the instruction is a IO related or a reference related or a memory related. And also the directory instruction or indirect instruction. So whatever it may be, I and output, that means the 4 bits represents the operation. Okay, what type of operation it should be get executed. So some 4 bits will be there. So mapping means decoding. So converting this into address. So it will be padding 0 on MSB, padding 0 on MSB and two zeros on LSBs. So here from here two bits. So totally we got seven bit which represents the instruction address. The instruction address. So like this we are supposed to map the 4 bits of code to 7 bit instruction address and this will be done in this mapping logic and that will be sent to the multiplexer and through the multiplexer the address this is the address right if the op code is I mean I and op code is 0 1 1 0 then the instruction address will be 0 0 double one zero 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 so this is the seven bits so this is the address of next instruction right so this address will be directly stored to the car so usually we are calling it as car which is control address register right so through the mapping logic we can find the address of next instruction okay we can find the address of next instruction that's the first one second one Second approach, hope you understood this one, right? So, second approach conditional or unconditional branch. Conditional or unconditional branch. So, coming to the conditional, let us uh, check with the conditional. Conditional means, see through the control memory in, in this control memory the instruction will be stored right among the complete instruction some bits will be representing the status some bits will be representing the status so that status bits will be mapping here this is a logic so I am telling about the conditional, right? So this status bits Yes So Status bits So there are some sort of status bits like Zero flag Okay Some carry flag or sign flag so based upon these so this is nothing but status bits status bits or we can also call it as a control bits okay so those status bits will be uh, uh, comparing with this particular logic whether the zero flag is either zero or one either carry flag is zero or one sign flag is zero or one so based upon that the next instruction will be loaded into car through multiplexer through the logic okay some sort of logic the logic example these, these flags depends upon the these flags and another one that is a unconditional unconditional means directly that will be moving so directly the branch address directly the address will be moved to car through multiplexer so unconditional and conditional okay see the next one second so unconditional and conditional so second one i'll write here unconditional or conditional right then 
the next one is a increment in the CAR. So, for example, consider the memory. In this memory, we are having some instructions. See, let it be I1, I2, I3, I4, and I5. Five instructions. Let it be some thousand, thousand one, thousand two. 1003 and 1004. These are the address of those instructions. Right? So, let it be the control address register is having some 1000. Okay. The third one, incrementing, incrementing CAR by 1. Okay. Now, so, from here, there will be a term called incrementer incrementer and through incrementer the logic will be sent here the address the address will be sent to the multi my multiplexer and to to the CR so initially for example if the the instruction 1000 is being executed immediately after incrementing the control address register to 1 the next address will be automatically 1001 so that is the address of the next instruction so the same thing will be happened here okay the same thing will be happened here and the next one so the, this is a one approach this is one approach to find the instruction of i mean address of next instruction and the finally the fourth one subroutine register by using subroutines by using subroutines. So subroutines are nothing but a functions in our C language. So we know that we are supposed to write some function call inside the main function and until the function call executes, the control never go to the function definition. So whenever the control executes the function call inside the main, automatically the control will move on to the sub function and the function definition will be get executed and once it completes its execution of a sub, sub function immediately the control will come back to the main, main program so the same concept will be repeated here for example for example here the instruction i3 is having some subroutine at some 200 instruction i3 is having some subroutine at the address of 2000 okay so initially for example if if the car is having the address 1002 it should call the subroutine so immediately what happens means car will be incremented with one okay and it will be stored in SBR sub sub routine register sub routine register so what happens here so 1 or 2 so 1 or 2 means here it will be 1003 1002 1003 and this address will be stored in sub routine register okay in sub routine register 1003 will be stored so and the control immediately moves on with the 2000 location and it will start executing the subroutine program and once it was completed perfectly again it will return back to this position 1003 that is our next address of next instruction so whenever it happens through the incremental so there will be some sort of subroutine register and through the subroutine register the next the address of next instruction will be loaded into car through the multiplexer okay so this is a fourth approach so hope you understood the four approaches first one is a mapping logic where we are deciding the uh, opcode and the mode total four bits and we are padding some zeros towards the msb and lsb and we are finding the address of next instruction and the second one is a conditional and unconditional so unconditional control memory in, in the control memory while executing the current instruction it will be having some sort of status bits which represents the address of next instruction 
so those bits will be applied to the logic and here the logic is similar the statistics will be similar with the uh, geo flag carry flag and sign flag so based upon this one it will it will generate the address of the next instruction otherwise simply whatever the status bits available in the control memory through that control bits the branch address will be loaded into the CR through the multiplexer so everything will be done through the multiplexer itself right and the next one is an increment so automatically the CR will be having the address of current instruction and incrementing that will give the address of the next instruction and finally the subroutine so whenever the subroutines are available immediately the car the address in the car will be incremented one and that address will be stored in the sub subroutine register so that the, once the control executes all the subroutine instructions immediately it will return back to the address which are stored in subroutine register so this is how the address sequencing will be applied that means how many ways the next uh, the address of next instructions will be calculated right so hope you understood these four approaches so if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much